it's your girl, Mikael Rose. I'm here with Iconics Radio. And the reason we laughing, because you just never know what be happening. But I'm going I'm to I'm finish that joke Cocoa after. <laughs> Listen. Shape butter. Okay, okay. Shape butter is real, now. We, oh, we already getting started. Okay. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> Today on Iconics Radio, guys, we have the amazing author. Recording spoken word artist, actor, husband, father, your friend's best friend, businessman. Listen, I could go on and on because the list just doesn't stop growing. And I'm so honored to finally have you here, Mr. Yolen, the poet. Hello, everybody. People in the back, calm down. Ladies, stop. He's married. Okay, stop. Oh make my sure God. you can see the colorful ring. On the color. <laughs> she said, make sure you can see it in the dark, too. Yeah. Listen. You ain't, miss, you ain't missing um, this for nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh my. This is going to be so much fun. How are you today? Man, I am blessed. Oh, man. It's, I can't complain, y'all. Oh, it man, feels man, so good y'all. to have you here. Man, thank you guys for inviting me, man. I really love y'all energy. I love the spot, man. Thank you. So, no, so. thank you for, for, for everything that you're bringing to the world. Right on. I mean, I I say that to to people that I really genuinely mean that, you know, because everyone brings something, obviously. Mm-hmm. But when you bring something special and it's a light, you got to, you know, give, you know, spread some roses out. Man, you, you give. I know it's said too often, but it's not said enough. What is it? Flowers. Get the flowers. Yes. Get the flowers. Get the yes. flowers. And that's one thing, man, especially with us. Look what you guys doing, man. I want to get y'all y'all flowers right now. Oh. Man, you and, and you know, congratulations and man, keep pushing <laughs> y'all. Push. Man. Thank you. If y'all don't know, y'all, you gonna learn. You gonna you learn, learn nothing. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna have so much fun today. Um, but let's start off. Number one, uh, yeah. congratulations on the book, Thank the you. new book. Um, let's let's talk about the book. Okay. The okay. name of it. Unknown child named Yolan. Deep. First of all, that's my actual name. It's not a stage name. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Like, what's your real name? That's it's my Yolan. Real name. And I named it Unknown Child Named Yolan for several reasons. Okay. But to make it short, um, I was doing research before I had to retire as a pathologist, pathology tech. I had a Persian patient come in, and she said, well, you know, in Persia, Yolan means beautiful black horse, right? Wow. Right? So as I started doing more research on it, it said Yolan, you know, romantic protector, warrior, poet. No lie, right? Oh, wow. Found out it was like 20 of us in the world. Every last one of us was some type of artist from India, Asia, uh, Africa, either doing hair, uh, making clothes, doing books, DJ, music, whatever the arts was. Every last one of them. Are right? you serious? Dig deeper. So George Lucas, Star Wars, right? Um, Cat Simi, he has a character named Yolan Brim, right? Mm-hmm. Looks like a brother, little green brim, but looks like a swole from, you know, a, a, a planet that has an African dialect. Mm-hmm. Yolan Brim, poet, warrior. You can look this up, man. Wow. So, you know, I always ask my mom, you know, what? how would you give me this name? Because, you know, my, my name is Yolan Rico Young, right? Rico. Yeah. Right? So, you know, uh, <laughs> so where did it come? She said, well, it was a French rock group she liked back in the days, uh-huh. right? Um, but the lead singer was Yolanda. So she said, I cut off the DA. I just like Yolan. And, that's how it came. That's that's where it went. Wow. So I didn't understand and actually dig deeper into the name until I was like in my late twenties. Mm, right. Mm, mm. So then on top of that, now going into how I was raised. So that's what the book is pretty much. It's I'm a poet, so it's poetical stories. I call it like a poetic bio. bio. I love that. Okay. Uh, short stories and poems from my upbringing, love, trials, tribulations. Um, being a black man in America, being yeah. a young child in America, you know, um, universal laws, like everything that comes with it. My favorite poets is Jill Scott Heron, Robert Frost. Right? Yes, yes. My Angelou, Langston Hughes, you know, we name a list. So I've always been told that my poems are like storytelling. There's a beginning, middle, and end. So when I finally decided to write it, it was actually on my, I was in the hospital. 
had, you know, 2015, I had a massive heart attack, right? Um, almost died, flatlined twice. If Shout out to my wife. She saved my life. I love my life. She saved my life. So from that moment, I had to have an ICD defibrillator put in, you know, so I have a pacemaker in my chest. Oh, wow. And I'm on a heart transplant right now as we speak. I was 35 and a half. Worked out three times a week. Didn't eat bad, you know, the whole nine. So they just chunked it up to stress and, of course, being diagnosed as African-American is a diagnosis, right? So, oh, wow, yeah. But, but but I didn't have nothing else to do. I had to retire early. And I already been gigging and doing shows and stuff. And I had wrote my first book, but I never published it. I just put it to the side. Right. So my wife and a couple other friends, you know, you know, my poetry family entertainers, like they would give me books and notepads and pens, like, yo, just write. But the time my hands, I couldn't think, you know, that was real. That was a dark, dark place at the time. Right. I just now this year really getting to the point of talking about it because there's a lot of cats going through it. Right before I had my heart attack, my best friend in high school had a heart attack and died. Wow. Two of my other homies. We all was 35. So I'm like, what am I supposed to be here for? Because it was the doctor was like, we don't know why you, how you even living. My blood pressure was 215 of 197. If anybody know anything about uh, BPs, you out of there. Yeah. So, make yeah. a long story short, once I started saying, you know what? Boom. Right. What's your why? I kept hearing my grandma. She passed away years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I believe in ancestors and all that. And I was like, you know, what's my why? Well, my why is my daughter's. It's his wife. Leave a legacy. This is what you do to give God gave you right. So, that's what I did. And then 2019, we, was it 2019 we released it? And it's been on ever since. Man, I love the way that you, you literally, you have this whole demeanor about you that's so relaxed now. Because <laughs> that BP is real. And I, I want to, I want to say thank you for not giving up. Man. Because that's, that's, that's kind of, I mean. It's not in my DNA, you know. Period. Yeah, you know, moms, it, it was funny because I remember. It felt like he was having, what you call that, heart, uh, heartburn or whatever. Right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm laying in bed, you know, I'm laying in the hospital, and I can literally hear my mom, like, get, get your ass up. Let's, you know, get off your shoulders. So what you going to do? Right. You know what I mean? And when I was calling back home to my people, so I'm originally from Cali, so when I talk to Pops and everything, I'm like, yo, so they saying this and that, whatever. He's like, okay, okay. So what you going to do next? It's always been like that. It's always been like and, that. You know, as we grew up, like, you don't have no excuse. Mm-hmm. Rest when you can and get up, but quit is not in your dialect. So I, I never knew to say I'm going to give up. And it was so many people around me, especially when you go to the hospitals and the clinics, and, and you, you would see people. Just, and you see so many people that just have that lost that lost yeah, look in their eyes. I would deal with patients, and two, both of them I have stage four cancer. Yeah. Cancer. yeah. But this one to come in everyday positive, smiling, cracking jokes. Right. This one might come in just, I'm done. Right, right, no right, right. Right. For. right. Guess right. who lives? Guess who make it? Right. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? So that helped out a lot. You know? Right. Yeah, so I just look at it like, man, I'm blessed to be on this earth still. I feel it. Now, who is Yolanda po- the poet? Oh, man, Yolanda Poet's poet um, <laughs> is a true lover of his people. True lover of his people. I, I, a, I like a that. A true lover of his people. Like, majority of what I spit and perform is storytelling about us. And I'm unapologetic about that. I love that. You know, um, uh, I have a poem in the book called Bamboo Breeze. Bamboo Breeze. Mm-hmm. Where I tell about the story of a sister um, being kicked out of her tribe because she wouldn't want to marry this other dude from this tribe. Mm-hmm. And the dude that she really loved. He was kicked out the tribe a long time ago, and then they fell, and he embraced her. You know, she was running from the wolves, and da 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 You know, great storytelling. And they end up embracing. Like, I've always enjoyed telling stories. I just never knew it was poetry. <laughs> you know, wow. Like, you know what I mean? Because I was emceeing back in the day, too. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. it was right bars. So learning stanzas and soliloquies, and I had so many great people around me that was coaching me and molding me. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. Back in the day... <laughs> I'm going to tell you when I seen you for the first time. Uh-oh. <laughs> Listen, I remember seeing you at Mr. A. Oh, man, you talking. We talking about. Wow. I remember seeing you never know who wow. be in the. And back in the that day, is... I went, my stage no. name, I went, I went by Barbie Z Black. Okay. 
Yeah. So this is when snow is running. Snow. snow. Black snow. Chocolate We're going to definitely get snow on. Chocolate lava. That's oh, actually man. where I, I met Shiny the Poet. That's my girl. That's actually, and I'm telling you. Beast. I'm t- and a um, uh, Bishop. Bishop, that's Bishop my the, Um Pumpkin from Pluto. Pumpkin. The original peach she biscuit. Atlanta, right. right now. So listen, I've been seeing you, so you just never know. Uh, right. So for me, I've I've always admired you. And Thank you were suave. <laughs> you were suave back in the day. Okay. This, I mean, you the still suave now. Lamps. But listen, <laughs> but you know, you know, um, I, I just want to say that we're talking about maybe shit what 10 15 plus like years ago 2008 we're talking years ago, years ago. you've been years. on the scene yeah. and yeah. thank you and you was you was killing in because you was emceeing but you was also spitting mm-hmm. but it just says so much about you and how much you've elevated now and now you got a book you're an author Man. whoa so how long have you been writing poetry Honestly, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna say I, my my mom was always saying like when I was a kid I was writing you know what I mean the wow. Dr. Seuss because I was always in the you know remember reading Rainbow and all that yeah you know, all that. come and, on um, Shell Silverstein's where the sidewalk ends and all that jazz yeah but I honestly remember actually starting to write when I started you know I me mean, smelling myself. When girls mm. start liking me, you know what I mean. Little I was just school. about to say that Rico. See, Little that's school. where the Rico came yeah, right, in. Right. <laughs> and I, that's why I was I would say Rico because you couldn't pronounce See? my real name. That's so funny. <laughs> so it, it was funny because you'd be on the phone talking, and girls would say, "Man, I just love listening to your voice." You know, I will, you know, okay, okay. So I would take songs like Joe to See or you. Oh, uh, you were spitting, you know, listen, writing it to him and throwing it <laughs> off. And I was like, man, I could do my own. So. When I would get in relationships, especially at times when I'm like, I'm really feeling this. Yeah. So my heart would come out. But street talk, the street talk, especially where I'm from, we just talk Ebonics. And you're from California. Yeah, I'm from Dago, I'm from San Diego. All right. So, you know, it, it just became part of the turf talk. And I'm not even realizing until I moved out here. It was like, man, you talk different. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, so uh, shout out to Deep and Ernest Benson, uh, firmly known as B-Talk. Yeah. They was the ones that's like, yo, amorism, poetry is poetry, but spoken word is different. Spoken word is your poetry on the mic, but you have to have amorisms. You use your energy. You got to, you know, project. So once I, it was like I was coachable. So once I got that, it was like, man, I never stopped gigging ever since. So let's back up a little bit. So people can really understand exactly what you just said, right? Mm -hmm. The difference between spoken word and poetry is what again? Okay, so poetry, like right now, this is a, a poetry book. Okay. So when you're reading poetry, you you're actually reading poetry, like your Langston Hughes, Robert Frost. You're reading. Right, you're reading. But when you say spoken word, you're speaking your poetry. So when you're uh, speaking it, you don't want to speak it the same way you would read it, right? Facts. You know what I mean? Gotcha. You want to bring your truth out. You pouring your heart in it. That's why uh-huh. when you see, like when you go back to Mr. A's or when you go to Bamboo or when you go to Shadow Bar, and you see the ones that stood out because they brought what they was feeling. I am. Right. I see. All that, the action with it. And that's what creates spoken word word i see you still wrote it down i see but now you're delivering it to the people you know and so y'all got this right yeah so yeah. don't so don't be out there you know calling yourself the the the, the poet spoken word one no you got to know the difference and that yes. makes so much sense because i'm telling you when you get on stage and you get in it yo i mean i and i've never done this i've never done this but later on could you give us something Absolutely. i i, I just want listen oh <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, young Yolan growing up, what was it like? <laughs> it's funny because it, it's Yolan, right? Y- yeah, but, Yolan. Yeah, right? Yolan. But, but you hear Yolan, it's so <laughs> funny. It's like, I've been hearing that my whole life. Right. So you get, okay, you get used to it, right? But growing up, oh, man, I'm a product of Reaganomics, Crackonomics. I was born in 78. Right. So I saw what the community was before the crack epidemic hit. Wow. Right. Yeah. I grew up around the gang culture my whole life. My whole life. It was in my house. Yeah. I will see my brother crease the rag. 
Blue Rag, West Coast Road in 36, Logan Heights, right? Then I, okay, so I'm going too fast. So moms was caught up in it. A lot of family members was caught up in it in the community. You know what I mean? So it started separating families. Mm -hmm. So I know what foster homes are, I know what group homes are. And I grew up with my grandma. She took us, me and my siblings. So then we moved Skyline, right? It's blood neighborhood, right? So I have to explain it like this to let people understand, like, the culture at the time was so pivotal, mm -hmm. so um, chaotic. Mm -hmm. Police brutality, you remember yeah. the Rodney King joint and all that. It was, it was, it was norm. It became the norm. Okay. Concrete jungle. So at the same time, you're still getting taught black history. Know yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we had a lot of it wasn't no race critical theory like what they trying to do now. Right. You know what I mean? So I was. I feel like I said I was like a Frankenstein. I got the best of everything. Mm. Got my grandma teaching me how to, you know, what I mean, treat a woman. Right. Cook clean for yourself. Right. Then I had the uncles teach me. You know, me and the big homies, you know, this is, you know. Yeah. You got to get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was, it, in my mind, I always like, but there's something better. Correct. There's something better. So by the time I turned 21 and made it past the statistic, supposedly, you know, of being incarcerated. Yes. You know what I mean? You see so many homies passing away, you in and out to. And I came out here, it grew me up because I ain't never seen so many black folks doing it. Wow. Entrepreneur wise, you know, black. When colleges. you came to Texas, when I came to Texas, you wow. Know, when I came to Houston. I was twenty one. Right after they had this, um, was it uh, Allison? I think they call it Allison. Mm -hmm. Like I came right after that. Okay. And I, I was hooked. I was wow. hooked. I was like, yo, look at all this. Chocolate. You can breathe. Yeah. Look at uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like third world, fifth world. You know, all the yeah. homies from different places. You know, in in the city, yeah. in and out the city. Everybody's speaking. I was turned on. Yeah, I was turned on, and it was like me being who I was wasn't yeah. was it uh, weird because at the same time back home I was into like native tongues, de la soul, tribe. Of course, what they call gangster rap. That was just what we listened to. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. But I was into the conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, expanding your mind. So I always had that, and it was taught in my in my house. Pops was like, "Here's a book." You know, get busy. Hmm. You know what I mean? So coming with that here was like, okay, God, this is where you want to be. So right. coming here, being able to help the youth, being able to go to different schools, being able to, to help others come out and see, me and you ain't no different. Right. I'm just right. an older version of you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you can yeah. come up out of this, right? So that was just my mission. I was like, because I was like, God, I want a mission. Hmm. What, what what can I do? You know? So what what what's really getting me is that, being a part of the epidemic culture, if you will, mm -hmm. or being in the, because even at a young age, I didn't think I would see 18. I mean, you would think, oh, but you're a girl. It doesn't matter. Yeah. There's certain, there's certain generations that you grow up in. There's certain things that you see and that you know that could, that it just could end quick, yeah. you know? And for you to still have, your parents giving you knowledge, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then pushing the the book in front of you, still saying, this may be going on, but don't forget this. Right. What you're doing now in the community, you, you're speaking to the youth, you're motivating them, you're putting out poetry, you, you're acting, mm -hmm. like you're, you're a full representation of what it takes right. to be, to make it. <laughs> right, right. to make it. Yeah. So let's go in a little bit deeper. Um, who influences you to write your poetry? Is it things that, you, that you've that you experienced? Is it things, because there's a lot of stuff that's happening now. So what influences you now? The past. Okay. And the present. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, seeing how the past connected from the oppression, unjustified, inequality, yeah. And seeing how what they was fighting for, our elders and ancestors fighting for then, we're still doing right now. Facts. Right? Facts. So I was, I didn't, <laughs> I can't say it like this. There was one point when I felt like I was talking more than walking. Meaning, mm -hmm. let me show you what I'm doing. So I can't tell you what to do if I'm not doing it. Right. So I changed up everything. Social media. I'm showing black love. I'm showing inventors. Showing yes. first this, I'm, I'm showing me and my family, me and my wife, when, like, and then investing. I'm doing everything that people say we don't do. 
So when you say, but yo, this, I can show you. Nope, that's not true. Boom. Right. This is this is what I'm doing. That's my why. My why is to leave the legacy for my daughters who are 4.0 students. Both of them play volleyball. You know, I mean, they they on the verge, a National Honor Society, Geo Force, you name it. Wow. Shout you know out to I mean? the young queens yeah. out there. That's yes. What they say, man, since they were baby, I say queens of the what? They say queens of the world. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. So, I I love seeing you on social media because exactly what you're saying is exactly what you embody and what I see you doing consistently. Yeah. Like, and the grind and the love for people is so real. So shout out to your team yeah. because your team keeps you going. Oh, now, you got some movies? Like, you, you've you <laughs> been doing movies? Brother been doing movies. Like, you've been dropping, what, like, you've done like six movies or so six in movies. three years. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. grinding. Two so more. <laughs> you got two more in the So so let's talk in a, let's talk a little bit about being an actor. Like what got you into acting? Cuz you've been like <laughs> it, it, it was it was uh, uh doing go, on a portrait scene. It was a portrait scene, man. You know what I mean? People would come out and um every time I it start getting used to every time I got off the mic, someone would say, "Hey man, can you come in?" So what happened was no, shout out to my homeboy Jay Speaks. It was Jay Speaks, uh, 2011. He was like, yo, man, the lead in this play, um, calling of a car girl, he fell out. Saying the wrong mm-hmm. correction. He said, oh, no, nah, it's just a short role. It's a short part, just a couple of lines. All right, man. So I had been getting scripts before that, but I was like, man, I ain't, ain't nobody trying to do no plays, no act. I ain't no actor, nothing like that, right? So I got the script. Was like, Page one, two, three, four. Man, this is this is a whole <laughs> this, this is a whole league. In two weeks, I had to learn in two weeks, so it was a success. Wow! And we ended up doing it again, and then from that, um, I did a couple other plays called uh, uh, "Just When You Thought You Had Me," "Colored Girl," "Scarlet Letter." You know, I started doing "Dance Cries" by Jamie, but the movie that was 2018. This is after I had the heart attack. This is Whoa. after. This is after. So my wife, she's an actress too. So it was Jayla. Shout What's your wife's Jayla. name? Uh, Ashley Neodoraj Young. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Ashley. Yeah, yeah. Hold it down, queen. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Let's yeah, go. That's, that's her, man. That's, <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> After two. So, <laughs> so, so she was it. auditioning. No, she had actually had the role. Uh-huh. And they was needing to audition for uh, the other lead, right? So I was like, okay, I'll go out for the audition. Right? Um, got the monologue. Killed it, right? Yeah. Killed it. So I got a call from the director, and she goes, look, we we don't want to cast you for the main lead, but what we're going to do is write a role for you. Whoa, yeah. So they wrote a whole other character for me named Genesis in Pipe Dream. So it went from that, then I got asked to do Definition of Manhood. So in that time from 2018, Pipe Dreams, Fair Play, Definition of Manhood, O'Shea, perfect life. O'Shea, first of all, let me tell you something about O'Shea. <laughs> uh, uh, rock living. What's rock. going on, my man? Rock. Hey, rock. I'm, yeah. I got, we got, look. <laughs> Amazing. <sighs> Amazing Houston talent. One of the hardest working men in the in the film industry. Like this, one of them. Brother Amazing. Dude, it's like, I can't remember the name of it, but if you go on Amazon or go to his IDMB. This boy's getting it. This brother played a role, like it was like a Twilight Zone role, where he opened up the box, right? Yeah. And I'm That's all I'm going to give. That's all I'm going to give. That's it, that's and it. You know, you don't know if the brother is the devil or the angel, but yeah, man. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm going I'm going to stamp this. Rock Living is like the Will Smith of Houston. Man. And, and he, I'm going I'm to stamp that because we're talking years in the game. But for you for you to be a part of so many different films on so many different levels, and the list is growing. Right now, you, you have this book, but there's another book coming out that you told me before the yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that one. Yeah, Mixed Emotions will be coming out um, at the end of this year. Um, I, that's probably going to be on audio first. Okay. Because like, everybody's doing audio. So I'm getting really asked to do audio. That's going to turn the audio, you know. Let's get you know, it. There. Let's yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, Iconic. We, Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Um, but Mixed Emotions is really the first book. Okay. 
But you can see how God already lined stuff up. For what, sure. What was supposed to be done first. Yes. So mixed emotions is it's mixed emotions, everyday poetry for everyday people. That one's more universal. Mixed emotions, more universal. This book um, is about you. Mm-hmm. It is the foundation that people need to read first yes. to get to know who you are. Like when the first page, that first, the first poem, you you right off the top, you're like, okay, this is where we're going. I love that. I love that. Um, one thing that I want to say is that this book is available, guys. So go and support. You are you're always doing shows. Always doing um, shows. where can people find you right now? Let's see, March second will be the next show, Pins Volume Three. Poetic Energy Needing Society. Um, shout out to the Soul Poetry team, Carlos Wallace, Kanai. Um, that's that. Y'all be holding yeah. it down too, boy. But this is a Woo. poetic play, so we, you know, what I mean, everybody, you, you know, it sell out all the time. I sell it quick. Um, the consequences of the absentee father. Yes, yes. When is when 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 is March that coming? Second. March the second. Okay. March 2nd. Slow down one more time and say the name of that one more time. Consequences of an absentee father. Period. So you guys look out because that project is dropping very we soon. We are grinding rehearsals the whole nine. You know, we we, we doing it. We want to do something different because the documentary, if you uh, which you can find on Quali TV, okay, um, the Poetic Energy Union Society, that documentary is like in I don't know how many, I can't even count how many every continent. Wow, done run over. 20, 20, 20 something awards was nominated for like over 40 and still getting nominated. Wow. Uh, 14 of, of Houston's artists, spoken word artists from up and comers, the vets, and everything. Spoken was, word artists, the spoken word community is huge. Houston got it, man. Like, seriously. Houston got it seven days a week. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Non stop. Non stop. You can find somewhere, somewhere in Houston, seven days a week. And the crazy thing about it, is I'm I'm adopted. <laughs> what you so, I'm adopted in Houston. So to get so much love and support out here, it's the the energy that you give back is the energy you're gonna return. Wow, this is yeah. man the 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 cover everything about this is fire. I'm 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 Thank just you. so 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 proud of you. Thank now you. I'm I'm gonna switch it up. What do you consider good music? Who? Uh oh. Wait a minute. Who are we talking about? Like genre? Or? Period. Like what make like when you wake up in the morning, you get your tea or your coffee. Like what's the first thing like you you going to? I'm gonna be honest with you. Let's go. Instrumentals. I can listen. What? To, Interesting. Right. Like, but like right now, no lie, Knife Wonder is on my joint. Right. Okay. And it's the hip hop instrumentals, but good music to me is music that hits your soul and bears the truth. You know what I mean? For black folks, music is our way out. Yes. Period. You know what I mean? Just like comedy is for us. Yeah. And we you know we we always in that uh, right there, right? Yeah. But we can listen to some music, and it could be some Curtis Mayfield. It might be James Brown. It might be Al Green. It might be Coltrane. <laughs> you ain't ready. Listen. Watch this. And then it might be Kendrick Lamar, or it might be Zero that day. Right. It might be Kurt Franklin that day. Facts. You know, it's what you need. And that's what I love about music. To me, music is the key to the soul. It is. It's one of the first foundations along with poetry. That's so true. It's how we communicate it. It's how we communicated back in the day. It's, it's, I'm so, so okay. I'm history. This no, is listen, history month. Let's go. Li- listen, I, I kid you not. Um, maybe it had to be like three or four weeks ago. Um, I, I, you know, I like, I like old school, like mm-hmm. slave, like, you know, mm-hmm. slave mm-hmm. movies. And I kid you not, I was watching, I'm, um, I'm a oh, And a my husband was like, why you keep watching all this old slave? And I was like, first of all, you just need to, let me mind my business and stay in your corner. <laughs> Get my hot sauce from my popcorn. Let me finish this. Listen. And those movies are so powerful to me, especially when they are embodying the fact that we came over here and we knew absolutely no English. Mm-hmm. Like, and we communicated on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. And so what what y'all better get with it. Listen. 
if you don't know your history, it will repeat you better. itself. Music is so, so heavy, and it's so necessary. Why, why do you think that every culture loves us but don't love us? They love our music. Mm-hmm. They love our style. Mm-hmm. They love our food. And I'm not saying this to try to make it like on some. No, absolutely know, not. Absolutely not. Because it, it's important for me, I know for, for me, to let let us know that it's okay to love us more than anybody love us because the world don't love us. We was taught that as kids. It's unfortunate we had to get taught to understand you have to survive in this world that don't love you for 400 Period. We still talking about voters registration, voters rights right now. That's right. That's right. So when I hear people say, especially us, like, man, I don't like hearing that. I don't want to see that because it makes me angry. It should. Yeah. But it should make you do something too because I want my daughter. My daughter was six. Mm-hmm. My oldest one, Carissa. And Roots came on, right? And we wasn't 15 minutes into it and she's already tearing, right? And she says, Dad, why they hate us so much, right? Mm-hmm. And I had to tell us, like, babe, it's not all of them, but they're all some bad apples. Right, right. Since my six-year-old child, she said, Dad, oh, wow. well, well, if the apples are so bad, why don't they just cut down the tree? <laughs> Listen. She's a writer. From right? the mouths of babes. <laughs> she said, cut down the tree why then. Why don't they just cut down the tree? So to me, wow. because how they're trying to erase us out of history right now, you know, the critical race theory, whatever they want Correct. to call it. You know what I mean? To Saturday, we did the Black Literature Matters, mm-hmm. right? At Grooves. Shout out to Duran and Be Impactful and their team. All right. Um, got invited to come there and, you know I mean, 15, 20 po- I mean, um, authors mm-hmm. from sci-fi, children's books, motivation, um, overcoming, um, storytelling, I mean, you name it, financial, was all in that building from ages 20-something to an, uh, or older in their 50s. Wow. So when I hear people say, oh, man, black people don't read. Mm-mm. What? <laughs> what? What? No. I've done more expos than I, <laughs> I didn't even know anything about. When I first started writing, mm-hmm. I was like, what, what's, what's the expo? And I was getting invited to all these joints because it was word of mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they know you do poetry. They know you do spoken word. I've done music videos. I'm doing, you know what I mean? And I literally do it for us. Wow. Hashtag black writers. Hashtag black producers. Hashtag black directors. Hashtag radio station. And why not? Why not? I love that. I, 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 I love, I love what, what, what you're doing because you're carrying a message that what you said in the beginning, you were one of those statistics that was not supposed to. Right. So as you carry the legacy and as you carry the, the next generation of, um, of blessings to the other spoken word artists that are up and coming, because oh, it's huge, it's oh. huge and it's growing. So, um, let me, Let's break it down a little bit more like this. Mm. In the next five years, <laughs> five years, what do you see yourself? Let's see. My daughter should be graduating. My older should be graduating college. <laughs> he went straight to the babies. Let me see. Let me see. Let me get them about the house first. And then <laughs> uh, I love it. I love being fatherhood wifey first. on somebody's island. Let's go. Just chilling. Yes. You know what I mean? Just chilling. Um, you know, Lord willing, I'm still here. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm, that's really what I'm about. That's my why. That's in, your in, why. In five years, I want to see them successful. Wow. I'm see me and my wife, you know, we we doing what we're doing now, learning everything from investing. Because at first, you know, and she knows and when you watch it, you know, online. Like, I had to <laughs> encourage her, like, baby, this investing is the only way we're going to get up out of it. That's it. <laughs> so that's when she starts seeing that money, you know, we was like, okay, so watch this in 10 years. Watch what this is going to do. Watch that's it, it. You know what I mean? So that's that's just my goal to continue in five years to see the young ones that I'm talking to now succeed, pay it forward. I'm just going to say this. Thank you for what you do for us. Hands down, because some people are afraid to do that. And we need that. We need people everywhere, not just what you're doing. We need people everywhere, but thank you for continuing to do what you do for us. 24, seven, three, six to five. I've been seeing you and I appreciate you. So, so um, any words of encouragement to the youth? What you got? Hey, (laughs) 
They know what's up. <laughs> Miss, look at his face. Look at that face. <laughs> Don't get distracted. Don't. Ooh. Don't let the imagery and the visuals and what you hear tell you that's what you are. Thank you. Yeah. Learn your history because your history will tell you what you're supposed to be. That's right. Not what this world tell you who you're supposed to be. Respect your elders. Whatever you put your heart to, continue to do it. Stay positive. Pay it forward. I guarantee you keep pushing your push and the movement will grow. All right. Now, listen, I, I wanted it earlier, but I want you to just, uh, this has never been done. First time in history on Iconics Radio, anybody has ever blessed the mic. Oh, I'm the first. The first oh, ever. It's Black History Month, so let's go ahead. So what I want you to do, mm-hmm. I want something nice. I want something sweet. I want something that's going to, because we got to play a game in a minute. Just so sweet. so I want nice. you to deliver. Nice and sweet. All right. <laughs> um, what, what you got? What, two, two minutes? Can you put two minutes on the clock or one minute, two, two minutes? Two minutes? A two-minute piece. Two-minute piece. Okay. Well, I got a short one. Okay. Check this out. Y'all get ready. Here we go. Introducing the one and only on Iconics Radio, Mr. Yolan, the poet. I sit back and relax and I meditate on things like, why did my Lord and my Savior choose me and not my homies who's deceased? Or my friends behind bars with the scars of confined institutions. Shaking my head in a state of confusion body blows just full of contusions with the agility to feed my fam the ability to know who i am just to protect my environment realizing the pain that's inside of it in a land of broken pieces which gives me the reason for drinking this liquor purple haze engulfing my system overindulging feeling the pressure of something much holy or something much greater conscious mind says gonna get better cooling my soul every time i'm on fire i am not old but i want to retire from the hurt and the pain yet the fact still remains that i am whatever he says i am if i wasn't then why would he say i am through my hurts and my habit and my circumstance he covered me for he's the great i am but i'm on top of this building And I'm looking straight down thinking I should just swan dive and end it right now because I feel so empty. And the money and the women didn't help me. But this world said this was my remedy. Well, if so, then why do I feel so lost and alone? Purgatory is my home. I'm uncovered, cold and exposed. When I heard a voice from the sky say, hold on, don't cry for I am. Whatever you say I am, if I wasn't there, why would you say I am? Through your hurts and your habits and your circumstance, I told you I'm the great I am. A bright light of sunshine. With his hand as my guide and a path and a plan where he wants me to be an ambassador of heaven. An open vessel just receiving his blessings. For my shame, he sprinkled his blood all over this seed. Blocking transgression, embodied victory. Gave me salvation, free from oppression. Back against the wall, now I'm heading this direction. With the words that he placed in my hand that says I am. Whatever you say, if I wasn't there, why would you say I am? Through your hurts and your habits and your circumstances. See, I told you I love you. I'm the great I am. See, I am. Whatever he says I am. If I wasn't, then why would he say I am? Gave me the wisdom and the knowledge and the discernment to understand. Oh, shucks. That's just my pops. He's the great I am. Got two minutes? Where's my keys at? Okay, snap. I got snap. it. Look at <laughs> got it. Mr. Yola the boy. Hey, oh, my God. That was out. crazy. Iconic. Listen. You guys are dope. Okay, okay. Um, where can uh, the people find you? Here we go. So, <laughs> first you can go to my website, www.com. So, in the middle of that com, that'll be Yolan Young. So, that's www.yolanyoung.com. IG, a poet's poet on IG. Facebook, you can find me, Yolan Young. So, poetry page, you can find me there. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. It's now time for a game. Oh, okay. You ready? (laughs) I was trying to decide on which one (laughs) to play with you. And I'm going to go with my favorite card game. Okay. I'm going to play my favorite card. Okay. So are you ready? Yes, let's go. I come for war. Okay. Oh man! Is if that the it, game? If, look, if this was Uno, he'd be like, "Oh, never mind." 
Okay, okay y'all. Here we go. All these four. <laughs> So I'm going to um, ask you a question. I'm going to give you some um, choices, and you give me the correct answer. All right, here we go. First question. What 90s group had the hit song by the name of Love Fool? A, The Verve, B, The Cardigans, or C, Hadaway? That must be like some. You know, <laughs> not R and B. I'm gonna say the card again. I don't. You You're right? Nah, for real? You, you lie. I don't care. <laughs> you are out. Because I had to double check and say, "You didn't know what I'm talking about. You didn't know what I'm talking about." Oh, that boy here to the, win. The say by the bell on the back of the car logo. The like, boy like, is oh. here to win. Oh, Listen. man. I Play, man, I ain't Let's go. It. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> what year was Forrest Gump released? Mm. A, 1995, B, 1994, or C, 1998? I'm going to say 95. It's either 95 or 98. It was 94. It was 94. That's okay. It was 94. It was the foe. It was the foe. Foe, foe. <laughs> That's okay. School. I was in middle school. We got more. We got Life more. Life is like a box of chocolate. Never know what you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So, what character is the beast in the 90s film The Sandlot? A, oh. a famous baseball player. B, the neighbor. Or C, the dog. The dog. Sandlot is a classic. Listen. Man. All right. James Earl Jones played the, the old school. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Listen. Yeah. Last one. Which artist had the most number one hit songs during the 90s? Ooh. A, Mariah Carey. B, Whitney Houston. Or C. Madonna. Ooh. <laughs> it's Mariah Carey's on point, too. Mm-hmm. And then Madonna came in from the 80s, too. I'm going to say Whitney. You had it. It was Mariah. It was? It was Mariah. Oh, I remember but- that song, too, because the chick I was dating at the time, she just kept playing it over and over. You know, this back in the day. Like, she really liked this album. She I could not. Y'all, this has been <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, I really man. enjoyed having you. You guys is live. Guys, listen, please go and purchase the book. Go and check out the website. Um, the foundation is definitely here to learn more about this amazing, amazing representation of black men representing the world and just holding it down for us. Hello. Now, not only that, um, you have some shows coming up. Um, you have movies coming out, books coming out. Um, a book is out right now. The audio book, uh, <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much much. for coming to Iconics Radio. And guys, look, be on the lookout because this this is not going to be the last time y'all going to see y'all. No, 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 no. He's definitely going to be back. All right. It's your girl, Mikhail Rose. Iconics Radio with my boy Yolan, the poet. Stay tuned, guys. We'll see you next time. Is he out? What's up, guys? Before we get ready to get up out of here, first of all, thank you so much for my signed copy, guys. Yeah! Okay, so um, I, I wanted I wanted you to um, extend like a little bit of extension. There's um, some new films that you wanted to give a shout out to that's coming oh, up soon. Absolutely, let's go. Okay, so uh, Jelly Roll Productions and I Do Media um, will be dropping Fair Play on all streaming platforms May 24th, okay. and then September 15th will be Pipe Dreams. And most of you guys know who's ever in the Houston area. You know Jelly Roll Productions. And uh, I do media do great work. So those will be the two films dropping, and then unspoken word uh, words by Old School Productions will be dropping later on this spring. So stay tuned, guys. Twenty twenty two is lit. So go and support. Be on the lookout. Set your reminders. 
and we're gonna put everything down there at the bottom of the screen. All right. So, all right, guys. We'll see you later. Iconics Radio. Mikhail Rose. We are Izzy out.